Da, 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 da. <clears throat> I'm getting all my stuff situated. Yeah. All my tangs. We're in the places. We're in the business. We're in business. We're in. The, we're into business. Into business. All right, guys. Hello, hello. Turn on the chat box. Yep. Just so we can see them. Um, if uh, why don't you also drop? Link. Excuse me. Why don't you also drop that link in there? Um, so for those of you guys that are new, we use a a platform where you can actually see the chats. Uh, unfortunately, if you don't click on this link, that guy is going to drop in here, um, then it just shows us you as a Facebook user because it's not able to pull the data from the uh, closed group. So if you guys want us to actually know who it is saying hello or hey guys, um, just please click on the link that he'll send and then you guys, we can actually see your name. Also, if this is your first time with us, I know there's been a ton of people joining the group here of late. So if this is one of the first times you're with us, um, just please let us know so we can warmly welcome you into this incredible community. And uh, if you are someone like Veronique, who's been with us for many, many uh, months and is already in our higher level programs, then uh, feel free to say hi as well. Great. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to sharing with you guys every, every Tuesday. Uh, at the same time, so 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Although we did discuss about possibly doing later ones, didn't we? Uh, yeah, but we'll talk about that some other time. Is that my imagination? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so for now, every uh, Tuesday at this time, we do a live training for the entire community here. Uh, there's a slew of different topics that we go through all the time. And um, really just to give you guys insights, uh, things that you can start to implement in your life immediately. And also just for you guys to get a sense of who we are, what we're about here, um, how we teach, the kind of education that you can expect to get here so that if you are someone that's looking forward to being in one of our programs, whether our two day live event or any of our uh, Awareness Effect Academy programs, uh, level one, two, three, we even have level four, which we just created not too long ago, then, you know, this will give you a very, very good understanding of the kind of training that you will get once you dive into those programs. So that's really the intention is also to obviously give back. And um, for those that don't move forward, you know, you can keep coming here and checking these out if that's what serves you best. Um, but we have, as you can see, like, Natalie is here and she's been in our programs. Kiersey is here. She's one of our coaches. Jasmine's here. She's someone from our team. Um, Veronique is here and she's in our higher end program. So uh, the training is, is wonderful, even, even just for, for the hour that we get to spend here. Obviously, um, we can't get into the depths of all the how-tos and how to do certain things. So these are more conversational about what the techniques can offer, where you might be stuck, things like that. And as far as like how to things, you know, if your question ever, someone's always like, well, how do you do that? How do you do that? Well, that's why we have programs, right? Yeah. For people who are dedicated to doing this work and uh, that, that want to just dive deeper. So yeah, we want to give you guys maps of, you know, essentially getting a very good overview of, of how this works, why this works, and then talking about different areas of life in which you could, um, uh, look at this work through and then, you know, how would, you know, from, from working with tens of thousands of people, we've just seen like the patterns obviously, right. And how things work and what people are dealing with. Um, but just so you guys know, like the real intention of the group here is, is to give you uh, complete proficiency over your mind, how it works, why it works, what's the mechanism for how you can transform it. And then uh, our hearts work these days. And what we're most passionate about is, is helping people go into higher states of consciousness and what is the purpose of that? Like, why do we want to go into higher states of consciousness? And we'll talk directly about anxiety and stress and how, uh, how you can use a higher state of consciousness. And, you know, of course, like people will define that in different ways. But what we're essentially saying is there are layers and levels to the mind. Okay. And we'll talk about this a lot today. But essentially, most people are stuck uh, in what's known as a, a localized conditioned mind. Okay, and don't get too stuck on the verbiage right now. We'll, we'll define it a little bit better in just here a moment. 
However, there are non-localized, much higher states of consciousness. When we enter these states of consciousness, it allows for our awareness to activate a certain healing mechanism in the body, which I know sounds like science fiction, but really it's pretty much the same thing as the way that your digestive tract works when you're eating food. Uh, the body's either metabolizing energy well and using that energy right for health, so to speak, or like many of us know, you give the wrong fuel to the body or bad fuel to the body or you have a lot of chemicals around you and that's going to give you a certain type of experience of life as well. And so what we want to do is we want to understand how our awareness works and then what are the type of practices that we can do that will elicit a type of healing response inside the body and so that you get out of what most people are in, which is kind of this like survival, management, coping type of lifestyle and really into, oh my God, I have this confidence to go through this experience and actually liberate myself from it so I no longer have to deal with it in my life. Right, so how many of you guys, because today we're, we're gonna talk about stress and anxiety, like that's, that's a, a regular common occurrence for you and that you have just been applying the same type of strategy over and over again, kind of seeing the same kind of results with it. And so it's like, you know, maybe you go through periods of time that are, you know, more anxious, uh, more stressful, and then time periods of less, but what you're looking for is like, how can I just really have a different experience than I've had probably your entire life? So if you're kind of in that boat, uh, feel free to say I in the chat box to let us know. And <clears throat> um, do you want to take it? Do you want to start off? Yeah, the, the thing that I'm always, I, I really like this topic. Um, I think it's something that <clears throat> if you're human, you're dealing with, right? Like I, I don't know anyone that I've met that doesn't at some point either throughout their day, throughout their week, et cetera, uh, say this line like, wow, I'm so stressed or I'm so overwhelmed or wow, that's making me very nervous or anxious or uh, scared or whatever it might be. So all of the conversations that we're having today are all going to be around that, right? And I think where most people look towards, and I just want to create a very a uh, big distinction between the work that we do here and some of the stuff that you are finding out there is um, we tried for 15 years to learn techniques to help manage our stress, overwhelm, and anxiety. And I would offer that the majority of books and videos and trainings out there are geared more towards coping, dealing, or managing stress, anxiety, concern, worry, et cetera, right? So most of you probably have heard of or have even practiced like neuro-linguistic programming, NLP for short, right? And that's all about reframing. So it's learning, okay, well, I have this story that I made up and that story is creating this level of turmoil or anxiety, stress, whatever in my system. So I'm not going to believe that I'm going to say this other story. And then that story is going to make me feel better about it. And then I'm going to be able to move forward. Reframing, right? Powerful. Great. Uh, and at the end of the day, what we found after doing that for 15 years is that maybe you can extend the time period between one outburst of anxiety or stress and the other right? Like, like you've managed the stress and anxiety so that the times in between gets extended. But if I were being, if I were to ask you this and, and please be honest, like, has anyone gotten rid of stress and anxiety in their lives? Completely. Like have all the time and energy and, and money that you've invested in dealing with stress and anxiety, have you figured out how to get rid of it once and for all. Mm -hmm. And truth is that you haven't. Because what happens is, and I, I know this to be true from having coached thousands, if not tens of thousands of people at this point, but life is always going to come at you. Doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't matter how far you've come. Like life is always coming. Right. And anything that is in the realm of unknown, anything that is in the realm of new is going to create a stress, 
anxiety, fearful response in your body. It just is. And so where we want to differ and where we want to kind of start to really shift the conversation is you have enough management tools, most of you, maybe not all of you, but most of you have enough management tools. Like you can tell me why you get stressed. You can tell me how this thing gets triggered. You can tell me when it was created. You can tell me who was there when it got, you can give me the whole litany of it all. But at the end of the day, here you are still dealing with it. And so where we shift is after having done that for a very long time, we actually got more curious, not about creating more space or managing or any of that. We actually wanted to get curious about how do we find the root cause in our body that actually creates that spiral of anxiety, stress, and overwhelm. So Instead of dealing with the anxiety, stress, and overwhelm, like most educations do, we're like, let's go to the source that spins that thing out. Instead of dealing with a symptom, it's like, can we find that root cause? And that's really the conversation that we're going to have with you guys here today. Yeah. So let's let's begin by, you know, Elon's starting to point at it, you know, and like we said, we're not going to give you the the here's the 10 steps you do for that because honestly it wouldn't serve anyway because what we what we teach here has to be directly experienced yes. what we wanted what we want to do here is give you guys the maps so you have the understanding of, of how these mechanisms work and why approaching it this way is not another way to manage it it's not another way to get you hyped up for the next 48 hours where you feel really good about yourself and your life and where it's going and then you know the first event that you didn't expect comes along and suddenly you're like feeling this dismay and kind of back in old patterns and you have this illusion that, oh, well, I guess this isn't working, which is where a lot of people land, right? You have these extraordinarily ecstatic experiences while you're at events. And then like two days later, it's like, what event, right? I'm still angry at my mom. My job sucks. My health is in disarray and I can't regulate myself. And, and I really want to say this, like, if you think about this from the most scientific principled way, right? Like first, first, uh, principle type thinking, it's people feel better when they feel safe. Just just let that land into your system for a second, right? Because like the, the words that we use, anxiety, stress, overwhelm, like really what we're saying is the body right now doesn't feel safe. We've, we've found different ways to articulate that in language, but like how do you know that the way I experience anxiety is the way Elon experiences anxiety or Sarah for that fact or anybody else, you know, that's, that's posting here. Like I, I can say the word anxiety and we all go, oh yeah, yeah, I have anxiety. And it's like, well, some of us are experiencing a type of anxiety that is unimaginable to somebody else. And it's such a, it, it has a stronghold over their lives, all right? So it's not totally fair. But I think if we take all that, would it be fair to summarize and say, well, what we're really experiencing is a lack of safety. Another, another way to say it is discomfort in the system. Like there's something that we're not enjoying about our internal experience. And so what most people have is this this illusion that their outside experience right this outside world experience is not the way they want it to be right and so they think like something is taking money away from them something is causing stress to them but really it's the internal stories and inter internal beliefs that you tell yourself that are taking away the money from you and the relationships from you and all that kind of stuff and so where everything else is kind of like how do we change the story so your perception out here is different well like elon said we want to get to there's discomfort in the body can we help the body alleviate that discomfort? Can we make the body feel more safe? And then naturally, what arises out of living a life that you profoundly feel at the center, grounded, innately, your awareness is, I am safe. It's not something you understand or something you have to habituate. It is just, a, it's a deep sense feeling. And that's why, again, you can understand what I'm saying, but unless you've done work to help yourself feel safe, you may not even know that you've spent most of your life feeling in a state of no safety or no fundamental well-being. And so a lot of our clients will begin to experience safety and well-being for the first time in their life. And that's when the light bulb goes off because now they have contrast and they go, oh, my God, I've been living in this extraordinarily high state of anxiety and stress. OK, this is this is something new like this is I want to cultivate that. OK, and so before I go any further here, if again, if you're brand new to the community and you're like, OK, well, how do I get started on this training? The first thing you can do is you can take advantage of the meditations that we have here in the group. 
Uh, specifically, we have one um, that trains you on exactly what I'm talking about. So you can actually start going through this training right now, totally free, not in any of our programs. And here's the best part, like training is a lot like wax on and wax off in the Karate Kid. If you try to understand why you're doing it, it's actually gonna impede the speed at which you can move. If you just start to practice it, the practice itself will, will reveal why it's working because it's going to work on you and you'll, you'll understand how it's working through your own experience. So if you want that meditation, just comment meditation or meditate in the comment box below. And we have our team, Corey, Jasmine, uh, Sarah, Tobias, someone will reach out to you and send you that meditation practice and you can start going through it right now. In fact, we have a, a 30 day challenge going on in the group right now, which uh, completes on June 9th, but Irregardless of beginning and uh, end dates, you can you can take on that challenge whenever you want. And I highly recommend that you do, I would say minimum seven days of practice, but reality is 21 to 30 days is kind of really where you want to be in the sweet spot to, to start seeing the benefits of it. And a lot of people start seeing benefits within a few sits. Okay. Yep. This is not this is not your grandpappy's meditation. It is not a practice of sitting there and trying to zen yourself out and quieting the mind. In fact, we don't give a shit about all that, like at all. If your mind is angry and upset, that's the meditation for you that day. Yep. What we're really training is how to view what's the seat of awareness at a higher consciousness when you're in that experience. And then again, what are the benefits of that? And so to give a map here of, of how this works, and again, if you want that, just type in uh, meditate. It's a free resource we give away to everybody in this group. Um, if you want to understand what's happening, right? Again, like Elon said, you can either approach your work through a, a psychological therapeutic kind of way, which is like a talk therapy. Here's what's going on in my life. Here's what I perceived. Here's what my parents did to me. Oh, this is why I act this way. Okay, this is why I respond this way. But again, like understanding that is so limiting because in the moment where the stress comes in and the nervous system is overreactive, you are not going to create enough of a gap for you to respond differently than you normally do. It's like we all know that. You get really upset. There's that knee-jerk reaction. You say something you didn't mean. Then you kind of get like hijacked. Later on, you come off of that hijack and you're like, yeah, and there's like shame and blame and guilt in the system that builds up and you're like damn i wish i would have done that differently so again like it's cool to have that awareness and then be able to take responsibility for it do cleanup work get back in communication with people and say hey you know like i'm, I'm really really sorry i did that that is highly transformative most people have not even gone to the lengths of learning that they can be responsible for the quality of their relationships by taking responsibility for those things okay that's extremely transformative we still train and teach those things okay but at the end of the day, we want to look at how do we no longer have that response? And not that the response is bad and wrong, because that response has served a purpose in your life. In fact, that response has kept you safe many, 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 many times before in your life. Okay, It's something you developed as a child, literally as a safety mechanism. And so to define what the mind is trying to do, what the mechanism really is all about, is really it's attempting to take discomfort in the system and run some kind of program out here that tries to make you feel more safe in here okay and again just check in with your own experience is that actually working do you actually feel more safe do you feel more grounded do you feel a deep sense of fundamental well-being in your life and if you don't then and you, even if you're really proficient at the mindset piece this is what you want to start inquiring about for yourself what we offer that you want to start inquiring about is okay well what else is there okay so Here's my map and then I'll send it over to Elon for you guys, okay? I offer that there is a, a conditioning that humanity is under, okay? So when you ask somebody, like, where is it that you're located? Where are you experiencing your life from? Most people are going to point up here. There, there seems to be this experience of, you know, light or images coming in through the eyes and then something that's processing it back here and that the, the awareness that you are, okay, that's a huge question, by the way, you can inquire about for, for the rest of your life, what is this awareness that you are? Is, is perceiving this world out here, okay? Now, when the only place you've ever lived in your entire life is localized between the left and the right ear, sitting here behind the eyes, then the only thing you have access to is the way that your mind is conditioned to see the world. And that's a very narrow band of what's really available to us, okay? Let me give you like an like actual science here about that, right? Whether you're talking about a light spectrum or whether you're talking about uh, sounds that we can hear, there's only certain frequencies that our eyes can see and that our ears can hear, 
right? Low frequencies and high frequencies. That's both light and sound. Now, there are many frequencies lower and higher than what these five senses can perceive. But to a human, those frequencies will either show no color at all on the light spectrum outside of the band of what we can see, or we'll actually, we will experience it like silence, even though silence does not exist, right? Because there's frequencies at every level. And so, again, if you think about your mind, it's just like these frequencies. There's a band of frequencies in which it operates in. And then anything outside those frequencies, it's as if that reality doesn't exist. And so if you live in that space, if you're living in that narrow band, then life and what you know the external world is projecting into your internal world is only based on that conditioning. And so the only way that we have found for people to actually heal themselves is to step outside these narrow bands of their own conditioned mind. And so what we, what we train on, this is what the meditation trains you on, by the way, is how to unhook from your localized awareness, okay? This seems strange at first, but as you practice it, you're like, wow, this is actually very natural to do, okay? And yeah. for anybody who's ever uh, done any work with plant medicines, whether it be you know, um, uh, mushrooms or ayahuasca, in essence, this is what psychedelics are giving people access to, is it's suddenly they are aware of a much broader range of awareness itself, unlocalized, and so people have profound experiences viewing themselves from that place because they're no longer inside of their conditioning. They can be with their internal experience in a way that they've never experienced before. And there is a transformation, quote unquote, that occurs there for a person as their internal perception changes. So we want to figure out, or what you guys may want to figure out in these practices is, well, how do I do that regularly? It's great if you want to do plant medicines. You know, we, 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 we honor that. We love that type of work. And you know, honestly, doing it for six hours, even if you do that monthly, is still just six hours in a month. Or, you know, the other thing is like learning how to do that and then practicing this daily to cultivate this new awareness, okay? And so here's the, the final piece. When you cultivate this, when you come out into non-localized awareness, again, higher state of consciousness, what ends up happening is you actually unmerge from the in internal experience, and what I mean by that is usually, like I said, when we're having this stress and anxiety response, it actually hijacks your brain, okay? And so when you're experiencing it, it's like you're experiencing it from almost like inside the pain. You, you become the pain. We even say in language, like, I am angry. I am sad. And you're literally saying that you are now the being of sadness, the being of anger. It doesn't even make sense. You're experiencing anger. You're experiencing sadness. But notice how we don't say that. It's like we're, we're actually naming that we're merged into the experience, okay? And it's this merging that doesn't allow for our body to metabolize this energy. It's actually stuck energy in the body. And so what the mind is responding to through, you know, this conditioning, these programs that your mind has, it's not things you chose, it's just things that you perceived or things that happened to you and you had to survive them. So it created all these different responses. What the mind is doing is it's noticing this, this discomfort and it's trying to do away with it. It's trying to figure out how to get rid of it. But the truth is, is that that energy is stuck in the body. The beautiful part about doing these meditations, about these healings that we're talking about is when you unmerge from these parts, the body responds differently than it normally would. Instead of the energy being stuck, the nervous system actually downregulates and it starts metabolizing. It's what, what they call in science, rest and digest state. Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, I'm not, I'm, this is spirituality we're talking about, but it's very steeped in science, right? In neuroscience and, and backed up by many, many years of research here. And so we are basically helping the body learn how to downregulate nervous system. I don't know about you guys, but I had no idea that I could be in any sort of control or have a say or work with my nervous system until I, until I started doing this. And so many of you guys get into environments and you start having this like overreactive response in the body. Now, of course, you look placid on the outside because you've learned how to make it look like you're perfectly fine, right? You, you ask your friends how they're doing. Oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. And they're like, a, you know, they're a rattling mess on the inside of their body. And it's because none of us have been told that you can actually retrain your nervous system and teach it how to downregulate and feel more safe. And so by going into altered states of consciousness, into these higher states of consciousness and unmerging, we actually allow for that energy that's stuck in the nervous system to flow down or flow up, but in short, to metabolize out of the body. When that happens, this experience of discomfort alleviates itself. 
and that's an actual healing like legit once the energy moves out it's just like food you know unless you put that food back in that food is not going back in the body right like that's your responsibility and now the mind can relax because it doesn't have to run the program to protect from that discomfort in the system and to us that's what healing is it's not managing, it's not coping, it's that the mind actually doesn't have anything to respond to anymore, it's not trying to defend itself, it's not trying to protect itself, it just is. And so we have uh, within ourselves and within you know, the many, many thousands of people that we have coached, the, the common wow moment for most people is that they'll be in a situation with a parent or a loved one or a friend or whatever, like some kind of uh, situation in the past that time and time again has created great stress for them or they have felt like they need to fight against and suddenly they're in that situation and they f and they don't have any sort of response to it and they know like you're looking at it you're like this is the moment where usually i blast my mom this is the moment where i defend myself this is the moment i get really sad this is the moment i go internal and separate and and you don't feel a desire to do any of that it just has kind of faded away it's like an old memory like a dream that you woke up from and you, and you don't, and you actually go up to your mind, you're like, we're not going to do anything. And the mind's like, no, we're good. And those are the moments you, you're just in awe and disbelief of your experience because now, because you didn't, didn't respond the same way, you don't have to get the same reaction from the, from the universe or, you know, your reality. It's like something new can arise that's never been here before. And it creates this loop instead of like a life where you always know what's going to happen. You know how you're going to respond. You know how you position yourself against other people. Um, here it actually starts creating this experience of novelty all the time. You're like, oh, that was new. That's cool. Like, and you get to explore this whole new way of being from this novel place of safety, which is really, really uh, radical to how most people are living. Yeah. And that, <clears throat> that last piece, that's when, when guy was saying like, it's something that needs to be felt. That's the part. It's like, the thing that is creating the overwhelm, the thing that is creating anxiety, the thing that is creating fear, the question I ask all our clients to ask themselves whenever they tell me like, I'm really overwhelmed or I'm really feeling this, I ask this question, is this the first time that you felt this thing? And I've never had anyone respond with a yes, ever. It doesn't matter what you're feeling. This is not a new experience for you. And if it's not a new experience, and I said, you know, when was the first time you can actually remember feeling this way? For most of you, that pattern was created, for some of you, it could be even before speaking. You had an experience and something like that shook you and that created this, this rupture. And then after that rupture came all of these protection mechanisms. And so what most people are generally looking at is the aftermath because it doesn't matter how much mindset work you do or one does, the mind is still the one doing it. Meaning that when you're reading a book and you have this thing in front of you and you're like, wow, oh my God, that's why I do it to the mind. That's the win. It's like, okay, I got more information. Now I understand that feels good. And you'll have a momentary aha moment, but nothing ever changes. And the reason it doesn't change is because the mind doesn't want you to go to that core place because it has been protecting you from going there your entire life. And when all of a sudden you're like, I would like to go and feel that thing. The mind's like, are you fucking out of your mind? Like <laughs> I have been protecting you from having to feel that mm. your entire life. And now you want to go back there. That thing almost killed us. Yeah. It feels like death. It's not just a bad feeling guys. Like the mind is convinced that if you go and you touch that live wire, if you go and open that door, it's going to kill you. And so it doesn't matter how much you read or how much information you get. It's the mind doing the work. So you'll have this experience where you'll like point right to the place. Like you know exactly the place. And then you'll be out of there. And again, 
having done this work for a very, very, very long time, having worked with the best of the best of the best in the world and getting trained on how to do this, having taken tens of thousands of people through this, I, what I'm sharing with you is just the human experience. And while we love to think of ourselves as unique, I know, uh, we're all here having a very, very similar human experience. And so I'm going to share with you something that you've also read and or heard a million times, which is the only way out is through. But if I say what's through, that's where the definition gets blurry because no one actually knows what through is. So I'm going to define for you what through means. Through means feeling that which has not been allowed to be felt in the presence of another so that it can fully be digested and released. So if energy, right, these waves that are just constantly like streaming through, hitting through, etc. Every once in a while, one of these frequencies will hit and it won't move through, right? It hits and you go, oh no. And you're not doing this consciously, by the way. This is like how your system is reacting. It goes like, oh no. And in that oh no moment, it gets locked in. And now it's here. Energy has not moved. It is locked in place. The only way to unlock it is to allow not the mind to see it, but allow awareness. And this is, you know, when we talk about level one, level two, level three of awareness, level one is that place where it's like, oh, awareness lives up here and I can begin to shift awareness out. Level two is where it gets really awesome is now you can shift awareness from space into the body. And as awareness is watching that aspect of the system that has that bind, the mere ability to have awareness on it and then have someone else's awareness, right? So now there's another system here also giving that peace, nourishment and resource. What ends up happening is this part that you've been protecting yourself for so long, which may be fear or terror or sadness or anger or upset, whatever it is, as it's being witnessed, it does something magical and it just starts to kind of open and release. And as it opens and release, gets what happens to energy. It begins to flow again. It is us who contain that clamp, that tension, like we're the ones keeping it in place. When we can give it the space to be seen without the judgment of, oh my God, this is the worst thing or this is going to kill me or whatever it is, it simply begins to flow again. Yeah. And this is kind of, you know, I, I mentioned that it's, it really only works with sitting with another and I, I will explain why. I'm going to give you option A, option B. Option A, it's the option that most of us have all been doing. Option A is, you know, every single one of you know, like you can even point me to the door. You know the door. You've seen it before. You've even maybe cracked it open, but you haven't been able to walk through it, right? Because what's waiting there is the unknown. It's dark. It's scary. And so every time you go to take that plunge and take that step in there, your body simply pulls. It's almost like an electric shock. It will pull you away and it goes, no, -uh, not now. So option A is you get to go walk through that door by yourself. Okay. Option B, I want you to imagine Guy and I holding both of your hands. And then you have an entire team of coaches, mentors, and support people who are going to walk through that door with you and feel exactly what you are going to feel at every single moment that you are going to feel it. Which do you think is more plausible that you are going to do? Option A or option B? I mean, I know this is not like rocket science, right? But obviously, option thankfully, B. Thankfully so, it's not rocket science. Yeah. yeah, obviously, option B. And so this is why I say this work is damn near impossible to do on your own. Like, truly, 
can you learn things that will help you adjust and do certain things on your own? Absolutely. There's, there's plenty of self to self practices, but the self to self practices are not going to be the ones that get you the healing that you are wanting. The rupture that got created in the first place got created when you were with another or with you were in a group, right? And so the way that the rupture got created needs to also be the way that it's healed. You didn't cause trauma onto yourself, right? Like, just think about it. Like, can you cause trauma to yourself? Like, you can't. There was a scenario that was happening that had you have sort of, sort of reaction, maybe a conversation with another a, a event with a group, whatever it is. And so that's why all of our programs, whichever you go through level two and level three that have these energetic healing practices, there's a group component and there's a one-on-one -on -one coaching component because that's the only way that you're going to create that healing. And so if you've been out on this island on your own trying to figure this out, it's not for a lack of trying. It's not for a lack of effort. It's not for a lack of commitment. It's not for a lack of you're clever, not clever, stupid, not stupid. It merely is that you can always just scratch the surface. The most you can do is you can kind of get yourself to that door. But the walking through it, that's where everything shifts. And that's why, you know, again, Guy and I are super independent. We were just talking about this actually at our coaches training. Super independent. Uh, we were immigrants that came here. We had no one to rely on other than us and our parents. Like that's how we were raised. So you best believe that when we started doing personal development, that's how we did it on our own. <laughs> we will figure this out. We will make it happen. And we did. And we had amazing results for a very, very, very long time until we didn't until we just kept getting to like, I call it the edge of what is capable in that level of work. And so it's not because you're stupid. It's not because you missed something. It's none of those things. It's not because you're missing a piece of information or there's this other process that someone didn't teach. Like none of that is true as much as your mind is going to want to make it true. Because again, keep in mind for the mind, for you to keep just touching the surface and getting information and getting those little aha moments that make you feel really good to the mind, that's amazing. It's like, if I could just keep them there, we're good. Because that means we're never actually dealing with what's there to deal with, but they're going to feel really good that we're not doing that. And we're just going to keep plugging along. So just something to consider, like, being able to get support, being able to receive support, being able to be witnessed by another is the most profound life changing experience. And it takes something to, to let that in. I mean, truly take something to let that in. And it's the biggest game changer. Yeah. And to Elon's point, that's not only relegated to uh, support from people. It's like, a, like, ener like receiving energetic support, right? Like, um, like if you want to manifest something, right? We always laugh about ma people who teach manifestation because it's like all, all of humanity is manifesting all the time. But the real question is, what what are you manifesting, and why are you manifesting? Well, your 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 ability to receive is directly correlated to the amount that you can manifest, right? Like uh, we take people down to Colombia to um, drink ayahuasca with this uh, indigenous family that we've built a relationship with over over the last five years. It's really profound that when we get down there, you know, people come for healing and they go through often either really beautiful ecstatic experiences or, or rather difficult ones and, and usually a combination of both. Our challenge is always not how much pain can you go through while you're down here. It's how much pleasure can you receive while you're down here? Because we find that humanity as a whole, we are, I mean, call yourself out on this one if you want by saying I in the chat box. It's like we are professional sufferers. Mm. Like... How many of you guys know that you're a professional sufferer? Okay. And, it, and if you are, and th this, by the way, doesn't have to apply to everybody. Like I have a masochist tendency in my system. Okay. It's part of what Elon was saying. This like, um, um, this, this thing about growing up as an immigrant with not a lot. Right. And like, you just find, okay, well, people aren't reliable. I can't rely on my parents. I can't rely on God. I can't really rely 
on anything other than myself. Then you try to get into a relationship. How does that go? <laughs> you know, it's like, I can't rely on anybody, but I really want a person in my life. And then all you do is make them wrong for not showing up for you. And then you go, well, if they're not it, let me get rid of them. I'll go find another. And guess what? They end up also disappointing you and not meeting expectations because your standards now for somebody else showing up for you is so high. And so you keep learning the same lesson internally. And of course, you self-validate. It seems so real. Of course it does. But that's your pattern, right? Like your pattern actually has to prove itself correct. The parts of your system that are there, whether it's a masochist or anything else that's defending your system, guess what? In order to seek its own survival, this part of you also is very concerned with its own survival. It's like it needs to create demand for its supply, right? Said another way, it needs to create problems to show that it's worthy of being part of you. So you have these identities and you're like, well, you know, yeah, that is how it is. And, and the thing, and guess what? You subconsciously, unconsciously put yourself into situations to reaffirm that reality, those frequencies. That's how the system is built. By the way, there's ingenuity in that. And there's an intelligence to that because in order for you to learn your lessons, those circumstances or variations of that have to loop until you fucking get it. And so we know, by the way, from, from quantum physics, they are now seeing this sensation, this uh, phenomena showing up in labs where it's the way that trauma comes in and then loops and loops and loops and loops. And the reason it doesn't stop is we haven't developed, again, the awareness that is unmerged from what the awareness is watching. Like you think that what's happening in front of you is what is happening. It's not. That's your conditioned parts hijacking your brain and awareness. But when you get out of that, instead of being the object that's experiencing what's happening, you become the subjective witnesser that's watching an object have the experience. And what I just said right there, I should probably repeat 17 times. You go from the per you go from being the object, the merged person merged awareness with that conditioning and you become the subjective witness that's observing the object go through that experience and that's why the energy can metabolize that's why the nervous system can down regulate because it's it, it's the merging and this is why most talk therapies or mindset work doesn't work because you're they they bring you back to the event and then you merge into it and you witness it and experience it from there. And really all you do is you loop in your trauma. You re recreate the trauma inside of your system. And so you experience the trauma again, trying to get out. And a lot of people report, well, I did that practice, but I actually felt more traumatized by it. Yeah, no shit. You just literally put yourself through the same situation again. And the system is like, well, see, that's still happening. You know, let's get more, let's get more defended. Let's, we need another program on top of that to protect this thing. And so that's that's what we really want to look at. And I want to tell you, like, we're, we're saying this in a lot of different ways. And it's to try to help you navigate, at least be like, oh, that's interesting, right? Because we know that if you, if you start realizing how interesting this is, your self-inquiry will lead you to these places. Elon and I are not, like, we're not believers in, like, you have to have a teacher to teach you everything. Your awareness actually has everything that you need to teach you. What Elon and I do and what has, have been, has been done to us gratefully is we have been with teachers who don't want to take power from us. They give it back. And that they are, they're showing us where to look instead of what to see. With the real, the real game changer is you reconditioning your awareness. You realizing how adapt, multidimensional, infinite, and way more expansive your awareness is than you ever imagined. Once you locate the seat of awareness, right? What Michael Singer calls your seat of awareness for anybody who's read Untethered Soul... A lot of you guys think like that's the game. I got to get to my seat of awareness, then I'm liberated. And we're here to tell you when you get to the seat of awareness and you locate that through your direct experience is where the game begins. By the way, it's also where the game starts getting real, real interesting. Because from there, there's no, uh, you know, with mindset, we always say there's a law of diminishing returns. You kind of like go up, have these like amazing experiences. You get hyper aware. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I'm gonna change my life. And then the frustration starts sitting in and the same lessons have a diminishing return. Because there's only so much you can learn through the through understanding. There's only so much we can understand. And understanding is always going to have these hard, crusty edges. Where eventually you're like, well, what's what's beyond that? And then you think, well, I need more philosophy. I need more understanding. I need to change my paradigm. And, and granted, those things can come. But is that what's really serving you? Like when I walk into a room and I'm feeling anxiety, I'm feeling anxiety. I don't give a shit what I try to convince myself in that moment. 
Stop feeling anxious. More anxiety. Yep. Why why am I feeling this way right now? More anxiety. Right? Because I'm 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 starting to view it from inside the experience. If I would just step out into my awareness when that's happening, and the anxiety has space now to start moving through, I can actually be with my anxiety. And guess what? A few minutes later, it will metabolize from my system. My system will go back, down-regulate. I'll feel grounded again. And boom, I can be in that space, authentically connected with other human beings, which is what most of us probably want. And so I want to tell you, this is not what we're offering here is not very radical. In fact, it's quite the opposite. I want you to think about the way you were when you were a little boy or little girl, because you intuitively did this. It was conditioned out of you later because someone told you not to be this way or that you can't be that way or you're not allowed to be that way because we've had really crazy ideas about child rearing for quite some time. But when you were a kid and you were upset, and for any parent, you know this to be true. I have a three and a half year old at home. This is what happens on a regular basis. Something gets upset. They're attached to something, whatever it might be. <laughs> right? Like in the, the experience begins. They're, 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 they're emoting. They're having a big energetic release. Now, as a parent, if you're uncomfortable with that, you try to squash it down. Stop being sad. This is silly. Right? Like all the stuff you heard when you were a child that made you feel terrible. But the reality is what that child is looking for at that moment, we call that a reach and respond. The child is reaching to the parent and it's and the child is looking for a response. But the child doesn't just want a physical body, right? It wants you to pick it up, pick him or her up and, and give them that, that safety that they're looking for. But beyond that, it is looking for an energetic attunement from the parent. And by the way, some of you guys had parents that were actually physically there. Like Elena and I had very loving parents that were physically there, actually available when we needed them. However, they completely lacked any sort of energetic, emotional uh, attunement. There was there was a desens there there was a desensitization that was done to them that they just they never got trained in, and so they could never quite meet our systems energetically the way that our systems wanted to be met. And by the way, that can cause a lot of confusion for kids, because on paper everyone tells you if your mom and dad were there, then that was a great upbringing. And so you'll be like, you'll have these glorified rosy sunglasses of mom and dad, but on the inside, you'll have confusion because you still feel trauma and you're like, well, there wasn't really trauma at home. Why do I still feel like I'm a traumatized person? That's been, you know, kind of a, a, a inquiry for me for two decades now. And, and this is what's helped reveal it is like, oh, there was a lack of attunement here. And that attunement is really what the child is looking for is they are feeling into the caretaker's nervous system. And the caretaker's nervous system is supposed to train the child how to down-regulate their nervous system and feel safe again. That's the role of the parent. Okay? How many of you guys realize just by hearing that, it's like your parents were not trained in this. They didn't certainly didn't know how to down-regulate their nervous system and then couldn't train the child how to feel safe. safe. And so you walk through this world with this feeling that nothing is safe. And then, of course, the news and social media and everything we hear today exacerbates those fears in order to motivate people to take action in specific ways, right? And it's very easy to hijack someone's limbic system when their limbic system is firing all the time, okay? So how do we retrain this? Well, you need to put yourself in a direct environment where you are actually retraining your nervous system to be met because we all still have those concerns. Just because you became an adult and became taller, your nervous system didn't magically start working differently than it did when you were a child, Right? Like, again, we have these weird distinctions that humans are somehow separate from nature, that children are somehow separate from adults, and that there's a way you are with a child that when you're an adult, you're no longer that way. It's like, well, no, you have the same machinery. I don't care if you have a computer that's smaller, or a computer that's big. If it has the same microprocessor, it works exactly the same way. <laughs> it doesn't change how it works. And so if as a child, what you needed was attunement from somebody else's nervous system, guess what you need as an adult? You need somebody who has a trained nervous system to help you template how to downregulate your nervous system. It's, it's an energetic exchange. It's not a mental exchange. What, we're, what we attempt, well, no, we, no, we attempt, what we do here is we train you how to look within your experience for those things. Because some of you guys are having these experiences. You're having transformative experiences. But here's the thing. When you don't have someone pointing at it while it's happening, you don't recognize it. Your awareness just doesn't know to recognize it, right? If like, for example, like when you were a little boy or a little girl, imagine you saw the color green 
But mom and dad never pointed at it and said green. Like that never happened. Either you would just stop seeing green altogether, like it wouldn't actually be part of your experience, or every time you saw green, your brain would go, I don't know. Or it would cause stress or whatever it is. You wouldn't be able to identify in your reality. And so when we go into higher states of consciousness with people, what ends up happening is their system starts going into a metabolic state. It starts metabolizing. And so they start feeling all these things in their body, these subtle energies. Sometimes it's discomfort. Sometimes it's ecstatic. Sometimes it's well-being. And guess what? No matter where people are at, Elon and I have to be like, that's what well-being feels like. That is a collapse. That is a distortion. That is a part of you right there. And when you start doing that with people, they create a map. They're like, oh, I see. And as your awareness recognizes all this, your, your narrow band of reality starts to expand into a much wider view. And you actually start experiencing more of reality, which also means more of your emotional state, more of your gifts, more of the ways that you authentically connect with people. And it could also mean like going through, holy shit, there's a lot of anxiety in there that's been built up. There's a lot of sadness in my system that's been built up. And like everything else in life, you know, like if you've ever been skydiving or on a roller coaster and you were young and mom and dad took you on that thing, that anxiety is starting to build in the system. Eventually, though, you got on the roller coaster and either you identified that anxiety is that's not for me and you never wanted to have that experience again. And now anytime someone mentions a roller coaster, you're like, absolutely not. <laughs> you know, you defend yourself from that or you went on that and you found it thrilling and you felt liberated from that anxiety. And now you're ecstatic to go on those roller coasters and have those experiences. That's life too. It's like you actually have to go on the roller coaster to find out that, oh my God, I'm free. I'm liberated from this anxiety. And now I can't wait to be on this ride. I can't wait I'm exhilarated to experience this roller coaster because life is a roller coaster. It's non sequential. It's not linear like the mind thinks. It is quantum in nature. It is unfolding in spontaneous, sporadic ways. And what we're wanting to do is can we get to a place in our awareness that no matter how this reality is unfolding, and again, to take a brief moment here to define reality, reality is the organic hologram that you are seeing that is directly correlated to the frequency output of your body. So meaning like whatever vibration you are that's emanating from your body, this reality, this organic hologram is just the mirror. That's what that frequency creates. And so if you want the mirror to change, what you're looking at in the mirror to change, the num number one thing you got to work on is how do I shift this frequency in my body? Not how do I think about reality different? That will naturally arise as you shift the frequency because reality just will appear differently to you. Okay, like you don't need to... Uh, think about a new movie, a new movie will just arise in correlation to that vibrational frequency. And so for most of us, we have been trained to be externally focused. And weirdly enough, when it comes to spirituality and healing, pretty much it go, you have to go against your own intuition nine out of 10 times, 9.9 .9 out of 10 times and do the exact opposite. So if like everyone's looking out to try to solve their problems and to try to create safety and no one is feeling safer, no one's going to think like you, act like you or feel like you. That's never going to happen. So it's a fool's errand to, to play that game. And most of humanity is still playing that game. So if everyone's doing that and it's not working, trust me, turning inside is going to give you a whole different view of how you can work with your own system. If you get to intimately know your nervous system, the subtle energy in your body, you will build a type of confidence inside your ability to be with anything that's unfolding in your life in such a capacity, it will literally blow your own fucking mind and everyone else around you. They're gonna be like, how are you so stable while this is happening? How are you so calm? How are you so connected? How are you still in faith? How are you still creating from here? Why? Because when fundamentally what you feel is well-being and safety, everything changes in your life. You can approach relationships differently. Like again, women here, you know, like I know that women for a fact physically uh, feel less safe in this world. They don't have the, the, the brawn you know, to, to protect themselves in certain situations. How many women go into relationships not feeling safe? And you want the man to provide safety for you. And again, you're externally focused. And this could be, by the way, go either way, honestly. Look, men can feel this way too, but I think it's more uh, prominent with women, right? And they're looking for that partner to give them feel safety. And then all that partner does is make them feel less safe. That's what's going on inside. Like that vibration will go find that partner. 
It will go be in relationships to prove itself worthy of the defensive patterns that it runs. It has to create a situation for it to keep working. And again, so if you want those things to change, the, fo the focus has to be on you internally metabolizing this energy, changing the internal frequency, and then we promise you, I mean, we, we guarantee it, your reality is going to change. We can't predict how it's going to change, but it's going to change, right? And, and it, it, I can't think of any situation, really, where people's reality doesn't change for the better. Like, I just can't think of one time in 20 years where I've seen it not become better for somebody. So, um, yeah. guys, so, yeah, you know, really, really yeah, the, exactly. If you work it, the work works. So if you're enjoying these conversations, again, you can come back here every week. We'll keep having them. But the reality is if you want to have these experiences, we can only train you through direct experience. Okay. And if you're really new to personal development, you're like, even my mind could use some some jogging. Like, again, we, we have developed programs to really meet people wherever they are in their experience. We believe that you do need, require a foundation of mindset. Uh, in order to help you integrate some bigger experiences. And so for our level one, we actually mostly focus on the mind. Level two and three more advocate towards the things that Elon and I are talking about here, which is how to retrain the nervous system, how to do the energetics. But we want to make sure that we're being very responsible, that if you're going to come to level two, L3, that you have this foundation set. So when you're liberating you know, all these programs, you don't have the habit of bringing your past from your past and bringing it back into your present again. And that's why we've we've built programs this way. So if you guys want to have a conversation with our team about these programs, any questions that you have, cost related, time, all this kind of stuff, um, that's what you want to do. You want to type contact me uh, in the comment box below and they will reach out to you. Another option is to just go to callsatori.com and actually book yourself a 15 minute uh, clarity call with our team. Either way works. And yeah, and, and that's that. And just to let you guys know, like we worked, have worked very, very diligently um, to make these available for people uh, at pretty much any financial level. You know, outside of you being like broke and stuck in a car and like literally like you cannot put food in your mouth. You know, there are people in those situations. And we have clients right now who have paid for $25,000 programs who literally started that way, right? In the, in the you know, being homeless or in the back of a car and within a year or two have seen such big changes in their lives. And so you really want to ask yourself often, you know, people, people get caught up on, on investments and stuff like that. It's like, cool. Like you don't have to invest. There's nothing you have to do here. If you don't want to do our programs, don't do our programs. Right? Like that's absolutely fine. You want to really look at, uh, what's the cost of staying the same? What's the cost of staying the same? What's the cost of always having to deal with the same issue? Like, you know, whatever you end up, if you end up investing in our programs, this is not a program that's going to pay off for the next three months or the next year and you have to see a direct ROI like that, although you will. This is something you're going to invest in and you're going to see a return on investment for the rest of your life. This is a return on investment that people around you will experience, your kids and your family and your coworkers will experience for the rest of the time that they spend around you. And so it, it, it permeates everywhere in your life. There's nowhere that it doesn't go. Because again, fundamentally, when you come from well-being and safety in your life, everything's like that. And so that's really the consideration here. Uh, and somebody awesome. asked, like, how do, and somebody just asked, Lisa asked, how do homeless people pay for your programs? Like when motivation's there, people figure it out. There's all sorts of situations, you know, whether they uh, go ask a family member or, you know, something like they're they're just situations where people figure it out like what we're looking for on the calls is you know are you a yes to this work because again we're kind of interviewing each other like you, you guys got to understand like it's not just about us distributing the work like when you come to work with with us you become part of our transformation family like we have a global network of people and you get to tap into that right and so in essence like we are also curating what that community looks like now, it's very rare that we have somebody come in here that's that's not a good fit, right? Because of the way that we set up our um, our process for getting people into programs. And it happens, right? Like we're, nobody's perfect and, and that happens. But like for the most part is we are interviewing each other. And so what we're looking for is your level of yes and commitment to doing this work. If you're a yes, that's really all we care about. And, and, and if you are, we will figure out nine out of 10 times a way for you to do these programs, including we have all sorts of teams 
um, that can um, get you funding if you need to and make your payments very, very low, even for our most high end programs. Okay, so that that's really it. It's like, do you want to do this work? There are plenty of times that Elon and I uh, hired coaches north of six figures programs when we were in our 20s that were way more expensive than what we could afford. But what we had learned, we would always get off the phone. And the first question we would ask each other is, do you want to do this? And if the answer was yes, we would just figure it out. And, and again, I can't think in 20 years of a single situation where Elon and I did that, the, that the investment that we made and what we got back in return wasn't, you know, I don't know what, what number to put on it, but a very large number fold of returns that we got. And those programs keep paying off in our lives. It's not like things we did 20 years ago are no longer informing our experience. So, you know, just from our, our personal experience, from watching people go through this, like we have seen major transformations happen for people uh, just from saying yes. And like that internal commitment to a process, a lot of stuff, like it's weird or not, like your intentions have a real impact on your reality, how people respond to you. When you say yes to something, even things that seem like that will never happen for a lot of people just start happening. The money arises, shows up, you know, and that can be a, a major milestone in someone's transformation, seeing that, oh my God, when I commit internally, I get met externally as well like this love actually comes to take care of me it's a huge shift all right y'all so again contact me or go to callsatori.com book a call um uh dana yeah if you uh if you need to talk to the team again you're welcome to do it you know the only people that we don't let book continuously calls is really just out of respect and integrity for the team like if you're booking calls and you're not showing up to them and you're not communicating with the team to tell them hey you know like some life event happened, I can't do that right now. Like we just feel that that's out of integrity and disrespectful for, for people's time. Um, so we, you know, if you're gonna book a call, like show up to the call, like make sure that you're there, uh, ready, ready to go because these people are, are really heart-centered people. Um, you know, we, you could call it our sales team, but these are people who do this work and they deeply, deeply, deeply care about people's lives and transforming. They're oftentimes watching your entire process. Some of these guys have watched clients of theirs go through these transformational processes for years with us and they've built incredible relationships with them. And I could tell you like when we meet as, a, as our team, like our core team, we're crying, we're laughing, we're celebrating, like we're talking about you guys because it's just so profound to watch people go through these experiences and what changes in their lives. It's, it's it never gets old. It just never gets old. So we love it. All right, y'all. Love you very much. Have a beautiful week. We will see you back here next Tuesday. And again, if you need support, just reach out to the team. Love y'all. Bye, everybody.